We're going to the Children's Museum today. It's about a 45 minute drive from our house. So I have my coffee and we just kind of groove until we get there. And we'll probably stop at the coffee shop and get some breakfast. Have our own cups my husband myself and my son and we use them all day every day we also have a pitcher that we use to pour milk in i think it's a little more aesthetically pleasing here is my coffee setup so this is just a cute jar i found and i use the scoop to fill the espresso holder and then i stamp it with this and then I hit it into this bowl, which is just a wooden bowl. That kind of have a circle theme going on. And then in here, we have the little mug, and then kind of our tea section instead if we don't want coffee. And I have an extra five pound bag up there. And then down here, we keep the immediate fill up that we have a little cup in too put it into this jar. So for our bedroom, the orange carpet ends and pink carpet is in here. Very fun carpet house. These, I really like vintage blinds. And then this is a sewing machine from the 1930s in a desk form that I just use as a nightstand. Have my big old aloe vera with all of my fancy rock crystals in there. And then the cork coaster. I keep a basket down here. Sometimes the kids put toys in there or blankets or whatever, but most of the time it's empty. And then we have linen sheets on here and I have light blue ones and then kind of bone tan ones. And then we have the blush other pillows. And I know this blanket does not look nice, but I have a nice blanket under it. I just don't want my dogs to do this to the nice blanket. So I make do for now. Over here we have our super old 1950s thermostat and a piece of artwork that I did, a bouquet and a vintage little thrifted cup, our dresser, a little extra blanket in there, undies drawer of mine, my knits drawer, husband's sock drawer, husband's sweats drawer. I'll do an extra video on our wardrobes another time, but I did speak about our closet projects. I did previously, these are all empty down here. These extra drawers. That's our, we keep our dirty clothes in here for pretty much the whole house. And then extra out of season clothes in that green basket up there. But this is quite messy for what it normally is, but we are packing for our trip. And I install these little black hooks but you can see the cool alligator wallpaper that I did a mediocre job of installing. And then some clothes for thread up. And then this is empty, it's just decorative. I love this little basket, but I don't really have too much to put on it. So I put my two hats and my fanny pack. And these are all my shorts that I'm gonna be packing for our trip. An extra pillow that we never put on the bed and all my husband's shorts and his cowboy hat. My husband has this nightstand that I thrifted and fixed up. It kind of reminds me of sunbeams. It's really cute with a very nice looking snake plant. And then I bought this lamp when we moved in because I just felt like 
it's kind of the right vibes for the room and matched it. I got it on Etsy. It's definitely the right vibes, but I actually don't own any other lamps. This is pretty much our only lamp in our entire house, but I think it's worth it. I also have this piece of my artwork from a few years ago that was framed and I love it. And then we have a full length mirror that was from the previous owners. For our kids travel tips, we have gone across the country, like literally across the country, furthest state to furthest state of the US, probably about five or so times now. Um, we've done it probably seven or so together, just the two of us without kids. And sometimes dogs are included. This coming trip, there will not be dogs included. Thankfully, that definitely makes it more challenging. But with kids, we are kind of a no screen at all, aside from family movies perspective. I am thinking about maybe having a plan C of downloading a few movies on my old iPhone. And that way we can maybe pull those out if we're desperate. But movies don't tend to be a good tool for us. We do have a toy waiting for our son at the destination in Florida, which is what we did at a previous time and it worked out really well. And then the whole time he just gets really excited for this toy. One of our ideas thus far, we do have a lot of snacks and we do apples and carrot sticks and cherry tomatoes for the older boy. We do a lot of beef jerky, um, trying to think what else. I will make sandwiches ahead of time, ahead of time. I will bring our own milk and I just got a cooler today. So I will make sure that that comes before we're heading out get everything organized in there and at least be good for a few days, put some ice in and have some healthier options than just fast food, even though we will have to do that at some places. But we have learned how to order at those locations. We always look for Chipotle type locations because it's easy to eat in the car. You can get what everybody likes and it's not the absolute messiest thing you can get. And it's relatively healthier than just doing McDonald's or something like that. But we do end up doing a lot of Starbucks. Every time we go on road trips, we know that you know, how we eat as a family is going to be shifted severely. And we do like to, once we get to our destination, go to the grocery store, get back on track with cooking our own meals and do the best we can while we're traveling, even though it's much harder than being in your own environment and in your own kitchen. Another travel tip is we don't like our kids to bring too many toys, but we absolutely bring toys on these monstrous 40 hour drives. We will have our son packs special toys to put in his little backpack that he can sit with and play with, things that will keep him entertained for quite some time. We also pack blankets, we pack kind of sleeping stuff for them that they can access in the back seat. And that worked really well the last time and everybody, an event of the drive would be to take a nap. And also the person in the passenger seat would take a nap with a pillow and a blanket when the other person was driving. We are going to be pacing this drive a little bit differently than we previously have. We're going to do one long day, about a 12 hour day. And then the next day is gonna be about a 16 hour day. So that's our longest day. We have a, fun, we're gonna to go to Mount Rushmore the first night. So that'll be a fun activity to look forward to the first day. And we'll be leaving from there and going um, to the middle of Missouri. And then we're gonna be staying with some family about 10 hours after the third day, and then we'll have another 10 hour drive to get into Florida and to the first beach stop. And I think that'll be good pacing, we'll see. We do like to have goals when we're traveling with kids. So something we like to get them excited for the next stop and, oh, we're gonna have a snack or we're going to grab lunch or go see a cool park. There's always something for them to look forward to at the end of a driving leg. And that way we can kind of just one at a time, take it off step by step. And sometimes we'll do surprises. Sometimes we'll just have special toys like bubbles we pull out when we stop. But other than that, we just try to keep it as positive and as, and as exciting as we can. Mm -hmm.